about me, I'm Ronnie Davis. I am a former um, award-winning personal trainer and champion MPC figure athlete. Um, who I have recently dropped out of the fitness industry to foray more into helping people with weight and food freedom. Tell me what what it means is helping people stop dieting for one thing and just learning to accept themselves accept their bodies learning how to eat in a way that makes them feel their best and their most confident and whatever way that that looks like for them right because so many people want to tell everybody what we're supposed to eat all of the time right but that's not working when we can't follow what everybody else is trying to tell us we're supposed to eat so food freedom for me is just eating in a way that we love and that works for us and weight freedom is just enjoying being in our body at whatever weight that is if that means losing weight great if that means staying at the weight we're at great but we're always told what we should eat and we're always told what we should weigh i say no i say weigh what makes you happy eat what makes you happy I had been working so hard for so many years. First of all, I hated myself when I was overweight. And then when I finally lost the weight and I started trying to transform my body, I worked so hard for so many years. And I spent so much time at war with how I looked and trying to turn it into something that I thought was going to one, make me happy, but two, make me feel like I was worthy. Right? Like I thought if I just get this waist size, if I just make my butt look this way, if I just do this, if I just win this competition, then I'll be happy. Then I'll feel like I'm worth something. Right? And when I won that competition, I was in a group of like 20 other women. Some of them were half my age. And I was nationally qualified. I had hundreds of people in the audience. I had a panel of, you know, national judges staring at me and saying, yep, you're the best. And I, I didn't feel any different about who I was. I didn't feel any different about my body. It didn't give me the things that I thought it was going to give me. I still hated myself. I still didn't think I was worth anything. All of these people were telling me that I was the best on there. And I was, I, I didn't believe it. I'm going, no, I, the hell, they, Surely they didn't see the other people up there because I, I did don't deserve this. I didn't feel any different. And I went, okay, maybe this isn't about my body after all. <laughs> and I, I stood back and I started looking at the choices that I had to make in my life in terms of the food that I had to eat and the exercise that I had to engage in to get myself to that point. And I started going, those things aren't really making me happy either. It's not worth it. The fight that it took to get me there wasn't worth it and it didn't give me the result that I thought it was. So maybe it's not the food. Maybe it's not the exercise. Maybe it's not about my body. Maybe there's something in me. Your body does not determine your worth. You will never find your worth in the number on the scale or on the other side of the next diet. You are worthy just for the simple fact that you are here now. You are enough as you are. We get to decide what we let our energy and our focus be on. Mm. So for example, the healthy at any size movement sort of attacks the media and people that are saying that, you know, fat isn't okay or whatever. And I agree right. with that. That's terrible messaging. But I think that the bigger message needs to be, we get to control how we let those messages affect us because we can't control anybody else. The only person we can control is ourselves. Right. Right. We get to decide whether we let those messages impact us. 
we get to decide whether we give our attention to people like the Kardashian sisters who are pushing detox teas and surgeries and telling us that we're not enough if we are not, if we don't look like them. Yeah. Or we can put our attention into the people and the things and the places and the, and the messages that help lift us up. And instead of the ones that bring us down, and even the ones that bring us down, we can decide that they're not true. We have more power than we give ourselves credit for. We have to stop yes. looking outside ourselves, and we have to stop blaming everybody else. We have to go, okay, I can control how I feel about that. I can control how I feel about my body. It doesn't matter what somebody else says to me. I get to decide how I feel about that, and I don't care what they say. Right. Simple, not easy. But I think that it comes from people who are willing to stand up and say, this is what I went through, because when we see other people doing it, it gives us permission. It gives us permission to validate ourselves and where we're at, and okay, so maybe I'm not so bad after all, because she went through it too, but it also gives us permission to be the one that shares. Right? Because we see what everybody else is doing. So when we stand up in our own power, despite the fear, because it is not easy, and I am still terrified every single day, <laughs> terrified every day. Um, but it's when we stand up and do it anyway. We say, I am scared. This is really scary. But this is important, and I'm going to do it anyway because I know it will help. Then we give other people to sort of step up into their power too and go, okay, if she can do it, so can I. Right. If she can be afraid and do it anyway, so can I. Why can't so I? My wish is that we stop dieting. The dieting just doesn't exist anymore. And we raise a new generation of girls who don't ca get caught in that trap of playing small their whole lives because they're ashamed of themselves they're ashamed of their weight they're ashamed of who they are my my wish is that we skip dieting altogether and we just raise a generation of women who own who they are and take the world by the gonads so to speak <laughs> Ghost without worrying about any of that. I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't necessarily have a special story. You know, for a lot of years, I thought I did. I thought I was the only one. I thought I was broken. I was a mess. I was special because I was damaged and I couldn't control my food and all of these other things. But it turns out, you know, after eight years of working with other women, my story is not special. My story is not unique. My story is the exact same as millions of other women. I just took my story to a couple of higher levels than most. I just got on stage and ended up believing. I just went a little farther than most women. But my story is the same as millions of other women. 